the story of a victory on the frontiers of flight. It begins with a blueprint from which an airplane grew. A new kind of airplane with a three-pointed wing like the Greek letter Delta with another big triangle for a fin. Its Air Force number was XF-92A. X for experimental, F for fighter. A very fast fighter if predictions came true. But there was much to learn. It was 1948, a long time ago as time is counted in aviation. And not much was known about flying at the speed of sound. To get the feel of this new kind of wing, high-speed runs were made on the flat desert at Edwards Air Force Base under strict military secrecy. At last, the first flight was at hand. Would this new wing be a success or a total flop, as some skeptics insisted? It was up to the 92A to find the answers. The date? September 18th, 1948. The world's first Delta was in the air. That first successful flight was only the beginning. For nearly five years, test pilots put her through her paces, including downhill flight at the speed of sound. As with every test program, there were discouragements as well as successes. But out of it all came the conclusion the Delta Wing would have many advantages at the speed of sound and beyond. And so to the world of flight had come a new shape, the Delta Wing a shape that was soon to appear on a whole new breed of high-spirited aircraft. Meanwhile, other Convair designers were at work on a different project, a new type of seaplane fighter. And then because of the success of the XF-92A, the Delta Wing was applied to a seaplane. The world's first jet seaplane, the Sea Dart. motion, the art of her design shows clearly. Spray is thrown to the sides, away from the air ducts that feed the engines. Water skis quickly lift the hull off the water for easier takeoff. Behind, a cloud of steam from the jet blast of her tailpipes. In the air, the Sea Dart skis are tucked up into her hull, and her kinship with the XF 92A is obvious. This Delta Wing was the flying wedge that split the sound barrier and gave to the Sea Dart the title World's First Supersonic Seaplane. With her Delta Wing, Landings are made at relatively low speed and as gracefully as a water bird. 
and her speed is matched by utility. For her, every sizable strip of water is a ready-made landing field. Bays, lakes, rivers, the sea dart can land on them all. Thus, the Delta Wing advanced the cause of air power by sea. One of man's long-time dreams is an airplane that would take off straight up. Now it seemed possible with an engine that could pull a plane up by its bootstraps and the Delta Wing. When the plane was built, its first tests were made in this huge building at Moffett Field, California. It was nicknamed Pogo Stick, officially Navy XFY-1. No plane had ever flown like this before, so a test harness was invented. The plane was actually flying inside the building, but should anything go wrong, strong cables would prevent disaster. stick was ready for free flight. Straight up, the first in history. smoothly shift over to straight and level flight once in the air. This is where the delta wing is so important. For with this wing, a stall is next to impossible. Here is an airplane that can operate from the deck of a ship, from a clearing in the jungle, or the top of a big building. Yet in flight, it probably is the fastest propeller fighter ever flown. To land, Pogo points its nose skyward. With an ordinary wing, there would be great risk of a stall, and the plane might fall out of control. But with the Delta wing, it is a graceful maneuver, almost like penmanship in the sky. Pogo is called the plane that can land on a dime. And its wing stems straight from the Delta XF-92A. comes the airplane in which the Delta heritage runs strongest of all. Blooded offspring of the XF-92A, U.S. Air Force F-102. service with Air Defense Command, U.S. Air Force, on the team that guards our nation from enemy attack. 
This distinguished team includes not only people of the Air Force, but civilians, serving as aircraft spotters and in the filter centers, keeping watch on the ramparts of freedom. And this plane will be the instrument of that team. cargo of armament to fling into the vitals of an enemy with her very own special brand of electronic wizardry. All in all, an airplane calculated to give pause to any enemy who might have designs on our country. progress in Delta Wings to date. It has come from many hands and brains. In the U.S. Air Force, U.S. Navy, National Advisory Committee on Aeronautics, and Convair, designer and builder of the planes. It is progress that will continue and of the challenges that lie beyond tomorrow. Field, located 16 miles from Convair, San Diego, and just one half mile north of the international boundary between Mexico and the United States, has been chosen as the site for the second phase of the XFY-1 flight test program. The XFY-1, the first airplane wherein the thrust of the propellers exceeds the weight of the airplane, and the first to take off vertically, is powered by a muscle-packed turboprop engine. This power plant drives contra-rotating propellers, each of which is 16 feet in diameter. The XFY-1 airplane features the advantages of the Delta Wing, a design now successfully used on three other high-performance aircraft currently in advanced stages of development by Convair. The Delta Wing is used because of its ability to pull into the vertical without stalling. The XFY-1 first flew in June 1954 inside the huge Moffett Field dirigible hangar. For these first operations, the airplane was contained in a tethering rig mounted in an area of the hangar where the overhead clearance is 184 feet. These tethered operations permitted the safe simulation of free flight and afforded an opportunity to thoroughly familiarize the pilot with the airplane's handling characteristics. Here's pilot Skeets Coleman with project engineer Burr Carroll. Coleman has had extensive experience in helicopters and practically all American fighter craft. Let's ask him about this morning's flight. What's the flight plan today, Skeets? We expect to take off a takeoff power and immediately begin the transition to the horizontal. We hope to have this accomplished by 200 feet, at which time we'll start a normal climb up to about 4,000 feet. Well, Skeets, it's obvious that once you make the transition to horizontal, you are committed to reverse that transition to vertical in order to land. What preparations have you made to familiarize yourself with the technique required? As a result of about 100 odd operations in both the tethering rig at Moffett and the free hover operations here at Brown Field, we feel we know a lot about the handling characteristics of the airplane. Essentially, what is your procedure for landing? We expect to make a normal approach in a conventional flare-out. However, at this point, we're going to depart from the conventional procedure. 
take advantage of the lift characteristics of the delta wing. As we rotate to the vertical, the propeller will take over the lift and will make a normal touchdown. Excuse me, I have to go. The pilot's seat is adjustable through a 45 degree arc, enabling the pilot to fly vertically in a nearly upright position. No warm-up is required of the turboprop engine, which enables the airplane to take off as soon as the turbine is brought up to speed. The absence of warm-up is obviously a tremendous advantage to tactical operations. Visualize this takeoff in terms of squadrons in a ground support operation close behind attacking troops. No landing strip required, no warm-up necessary, no extensive base facilities, and nearly immediate contact with the enemy. transition to level flight and begins his climb to 4,000 feet. For the moment, this airplane has lost its special identity, except for that big vertical fin. It is just another good close support fighter with excellent flight characteristics. engine of 5,500 estimated shaft horsepower drives the contra-rotating propellers. The huge blades absorb this power to produce an excess of 17,000 pounds of thrust, which makes possible the vertical takeoff of the XFY-1. The propeller wash induced is sufficient as well to actuate control surfaces, even when the airplane is not in motion. In this airplane, as in the other Delta Wing aircraft, movable surfaces known as elevons attached aft to the wings combine the control effects achieved by ailerons and elevators in conventional airplanes. Although the pilot has never flown the airplane in horizontal flight, complete mastery is evident from the moment he is airborne. Control of the airplane in both vertical and horizontal attitudes is naturally and reliably achieved. XFY-1 pulls away from the chase plane with ease. This is both the slowest and the fastest propeller-driven airplane in history. In horizontal flight, the safety of this airplane with its radical design concept is exactly the same as a conventional propeller-driven airplane. The important difference is in the takeoff and landing runs. These runs are the slowest in the world, and the pilot can be safely ejected at any altitude over 100 feet. Compare this with fast takeoff and hot landing jet aircraft, requiring runways 8,500 feet long. relatively slow speed at high angle of attack, which is normal for delta wing aircraft. A conventional airplane would flare out at this point and cut power, but the XFY-1 noses up and with the application of power literally and actually hangs on its props. estimate on 
how this maneuver would be executed has been confirmed. And now for the left down. Flight operation completed. The practical application of this new and radical flight concept, witnessed today in the Convair XFY-1, brings closer to implementation the ideal of tactical air assault without the necessity for elaborate fixed bases. Convair and the United States Navy have begun a new chapter in the history of aviation. <laughs>